Hi everyone, uh, welcome to yet another edition of Let's Talk Design and uh, I'm really excited to see you guys again. Thank you for being our audience for the last over a year. We've done more than 50 such sessions and uh, we're really excited to carry this series forward. Uh, today we'll be talking about the use of natural stone in architecture, interiors and design. And I have our guest with us. Hi. Hi, Richie. Hi. Hi. I can't Good really evening. See, hi. hi. I can't really see your face entirely. So can you reset a little bit? Yeah. Much better. Much better. Is that okay? Yes, that, that looks much better. Thank you. Uh, so welcome, Ruchi. Thanks for being here with us Thank you. on this series. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be talking to you today. Uh, I'll just quickly introduce you to our audience. Thank and, you. Uh, so we have with us, uh, tell me, how do you pronounce your studio name? Is it rs.te? RS, yes, exactly. rs.te. Okay, so that I got it right. So we have with us Studio RS.de, uh, founded in 2013 by Ruchi Sharma. RS.de blends old world art with contemporary design style and meticulous craftsmanship with modern day functionality, bringing forth projects that excite and amaze every client. With over 17 years of experience, Ruchi started out as an enthusiastic young designer, finding herself catapulted <laughs> into the enthralling world of all things design. Pulling creativity from ancient Indian heritage to non-traditional avant-garde architecture, every project flawlessly infuses a multitude of details, working in harmony to create the perfect space. So thanks, Ruchi, once again, for being a part of the Let's Talk Design series. And uh, like I said, we'll be talking about the use of natural stone today. So I have a list of questions with us. If uh, in case the audience has any, they can put them down in the comment box and we'll take them at the end of the session. Super. So uh, can I start? Yes, before you start, I would like to actually uh, say a thank you to A-Class Marble and of course the entire Bhandari family. Uh, of course, I'd also like to thank my client, Mr. Hemchan Ji, Hemchan Jain, who got me introduced to A-Class Marble. And hence, since then, I've been uh, working with you all right. with the passion that Mr. Bhandari carries for the material. That's great. That's great. It's really nice to have uh, your own designers who have been a part of this journey. And uh, I think the A-class legacy carries on. Thanks to all of you. So uh, the first, my, yeah, my first question to you is, uh, can you talk about some unique ways in which you have used natural stone in your projects? Uh, well, there are many unique ways that we've used natural stone. And uh, it's not just natural stone, uh, but it's the love for natural material that kind of um, pulled me up to, to this topic today. Uh, well, the beauty of natural stone is that every lot is unique, right? Mm -hmm. It is the characteristic of the stone which gives an artist an eye-opening to details and creates, and hence an artist can create its own uniqueness. Well, currently we are working with a Korean company where we are infusing fragrance into the natural stone. So this gives us a great opportunity as an experiential design firm to elevate from one sensory organ to the other. So I think... Um, Times have changed big time. I could never even imagine, uh, you know, in my 17 years of practice that we could infuse fragrance in the natural stone. So, yes, that is the unique way that we are bringing in the use of natural stone. Right. It sounds really, really interesting, actually. I also haven't heard that in yes. you know, my journey as an architect. So that's yes. fabulous. Okay. So, uh, you know, there are obviously many new ways of using stone, like you said, right? Uh, what, what do you think are the challenges or constraints as well as the benefits of these novel approaches to uh, design with natural stone? And it doesn't need to necessarily be about your sort of project. It could be just across the board. 
so uh, natural material has its own pros and cons you know the first thing that when i kind of tell my clients when we go for a selection of any natural material you can't really pinpoint and say that why a certain characteristic is like that so the first uh, foremost role that we carry as a consultant is to get them on our page for the love of the natural material right mm-hmm. and as i just started my conversation saying the uniqueness of the natural material is the is the drawing force for any artist to kind of uh, understand its limitations it is its expansion contraction so every material offers its uh, limitations but it has its own strength so we work around create details um, so that the material supports the details it's not the detail that is supporting the material but the the um, material supports the details right that's that's a, that's a very good point and i think that's an interesting approach to sort of you know starting the whole design process of working with stone yeah 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 and uh, you know people say that it has cracks it has its its porosity but you see where are we today the porosity of the marble itself has allowed us to infuse fragrance right so that's what the you know that's where technology has helped us and hence it it plays a vital role so rather than fighting with a certain material that why it is like that it's it's the best that you first understand the behavior of a material uh in the climatic conditions that we are applying the material for us mm-hmm. to then eventually take a call that uh, why dry cladding came into the picture we mm-hmm. hadn't heard of dry cladding uh, you know 50 years ago perhaps or 100 mm-hmm. years ago so there are a lot of benefits and as times are changing we all as designers and architects have evolved and uh, are accepting that yes uh, it's the love for the material that brings us to design a certain detail mm-hmm. right so uh, since you you are you spoke about cladding and right and outdoor mm-hmm. uh, in outdoor spaces stone mm-hmm. obviously needs to be worked around differently right and uh, technology also plays a huge role there so mm. how do you see the use of natural stone changing and evolving as a result of technology particularly in outdoor spaces so uh, you know in outdoor spaces technology and the natural stone plays a vital role because mm. the technology helps us to create our own forms and shapes right and um, of course there are technical benefits where we are not increasing the weight on the structure with wet cladding mm-hmm. the way you know the ancient methodologies were um with all of this um also the joinery is that we use for the cladding has to be very meticulously planned and uh, so it's a hand in glove so the details mm-hmm. the joints and the characteristic of the natural stone uh re, you know at times it reacts with the climate and it makes it look even more beautiful like mm-hmm. you know for donkey's ears that we've seen uh, all over europe a lot of metal has been used and when when clients question that it has its own uh, patina its own characteristics of changing likewise with stone and the beauty with the natural material is you can just get it back to its natural form you just have to take care of the material in its right manner and hence very often what we do is in fact very often i've i get into a conversation uh, engaging with the marble quarry guys like you all that every every marble because of its iron and calcium uh, you know content and other characteristics need to be handled in a different way so there is no thumb rule that a a marble would would behave uh in a certain climatic yeah, yeah. condition yeah. differently so it's very important for architects and designers to engage with the uh quarry owners and the marble traders like like all of us that the application of the stone in the right uh project would make uh, or decide uh you know how the material or the natural stone would behave right interesting now do you see 
a difference right in the way stone is used natural stones are used in residential spaces versus more commercial spaces or public spaces oh yes there is a lot of difference uh the way public areas they are heavy duty uh, human traffic in public areas and the choice of natural stone that we make for a public area is very different to what a residential project with its lux and luxury could offer you know mm-hmm. a hospitality project for the matter of fact so it not just climate it's also the human traffic that decides mm-hmm. that what what is the um you know the 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 uh, chemical or the technical information of that stone um you know to be for architects to decide so and also the laying methods change when you're doing a public uh space installation where uh, where you have to adapt to finishes like honed finish leather finish you have to make it anti skid so mm-hmm. yeah there is there's an array of techniques which all you guys are bringing in and which is possible only through technology and you all are bringing it into the picture because it it demands so for public areas unlike hospitality and residential projects mm-hmm. very often for commercial projects also we are choosing uh, uh marble or stone to say so as a natural material in the public areas because in a commercial project so the drawback with stone is its ta- its sound acoustics uh characteristic is not supportive so but right. at least um at least its maintenance and wear and tear is so robust that for commercial corporate projects it works wonders when you're doing um, the use of using natural material for public areas and then cordoning it off with sound acoustic materials in in the private and semi private areas could you share some specific examples of uh, natural stones that you've used in residential areas versus in private and uh, sorry versus public and commercial areas you you mean examples of of, of stones what, yeah. may, of the names types of, of stones. stones yes yeah yeah the types of stones yeah. and the names of stones yes so uh, of course uh, for the public areas very often we go for natural stones which are granites river wash right. granites you know uh, the laka red granite depending on what the aesthetics uh, demands and uh, with marbles of course uh, i don't know somehow as an artist i feel that there is there is a phase when i'm doing projects so it's it's for you know for 5 years 10 years we are doing a certain genre of marbles perhaps at one time it used to be beige which was the classic shades and then it moved to thassos and uh, you know then there was time we used satwari or so often you know right and and it's it's so beautiful that every lot being the same name but every mm-hmm. lot has so much different to offer yeah. difference you know so some crazy stones we've used yeah such heavy on character and colors like you can see behind where i'm sitting there is also a red onyx on my yeah. on my background yeah. so i'm personally a great fan of natural materials and stone tops it because that's the beginning of our material selection list right right yeah. so good to hear that uh what are your thoughts on cost effectiveness of stone right a lot of people especially homeowners have concerns about cost versus durability mm-hmm. of natural stone what is your take on this so i would say um a the first beginning point is that uh, as a design firm we budget out the project considering the budget we plan what range of stone or natural material or marble uh, or veneer whatsoever would be costed or could be considered in its uh, factor of budget and we are fortunate enough to know that you guys offer an array of marbles or natural stones right for residential projects you guys offer some crazy amount of uh, beige to grays to uh, creams and whites so why worry when you guys are sitting there with such large variety of marbles to select from 
right from doing jewelry showrooms where where in the retail sector the cost of using a marble is of course uh, very sensitive so we've used marble but we've still convinced the client to use marble and we use botticinos and beiges in the range of 250 rupees to 300 rupees you know uh, also to say so it's very important um, for private residences to select the marble uh, with with the knowledge of its character very often the characteristics of marble if they are if they have the figures and veins like the mountains they open up over the period of time after 10 years but you know they have to be educated from the beginning from consultants like us and uh, you know solution providers like you all that if you're using it this is the way you have to use it like white marble demands high maintenance you have to seal the marble on its outer layer and inner layer so i think it's a myth that uh, that it's expensive to use marble i have used expensive marble to the t and also affordable marbles mm-hmm. for retail segments so i think until you step out into the market to know that let's let's opt for a natural stone rather than any artificial stone because human touch we are touching walking feeling the material the climate that we are living in does support i would say largely in india uh, you know we have some fantastic uh, weather and marble is a very predominantly supportive material mm-hmm. you know so select the marble right factor in your budgets from the beginning it's not that what what you hear as rumors you know that marble is expensive you get it only in the range of uh, you know 1800 bucks you get it in the range of 4000 to 400 rupees to 250 rupees you have to be you have to make a choice if you want to live the natural way then use the natural material sure so uh, last question from me uh, you know a lux- luxury design particularly mm-hmm. for homes has revolved around italian marble and everybody knows mm-hmm. that right mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. do you still think that italian marble is as unique and irreplaceable as it was earlier yeah yeah absolutely right absolutely why, so why italy, would so why would so it that? yes so italy has offered us some uh, some world's best beige stones and you know white marbles and uh, of course i would very proudly say that indian makarana stands in par with the quality of the italian marbles uh, in terms of its characteristics but the beauty of this is especially with the with the aging of these stones they become even more beautiful the polish increases so so you should need to know which marble you're talking about from italy that over the years these marbles age out and with the aging of the material it it becomes even more lovable with its polish shine you know and you're still walking and touching the natural material so absolutely ir- ir- irreplaceable is the italian marble i would say but i i would also like to say that uh nowadays you are getting some great varieties from brazil from france from canada so we can't ignore those uh natural stones also but right. italian italian marbles have been timeless so right. yeah that's great what i feel great 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 so um if uh, you know if you had to pay, i actually if there any questions from the audience i'm happy to take some i have two last things to ask you so i'll wait for the audience to uh, drop in their questions if any uh if you had to pick one stone that uh you know represents you you know and your personality what would that stone be i i prefer the timeless stones because i don't get tired of them so i would go for the michelangelo uh the color of the michelangelo that i'm in love with right, right? uh the translucency of michelangelo that totally i'm in love with mm-hmm. right it's it's again uh, timeless uh i love the satwario but but if i compare the michelangelo with satwario the translucency of michelangelo draws me more right 
right so i okay. choose for for that yes yeah yes. uh and as you know this series is called uh, let's talk design right mm-hmm. so we are following the hashtag let's talk design so if you had to share one tip or one insight or one thing to say to our audience which is on let's talk design when it comes to stone what would that be is something to leave our audience with so i'd like to start with a beautiful quote that i very often travel with uh whenever i roam nature is the only stranger that i feel like home that's what i feel with nature and stone and natural material belongs to the beauty of nature uh the design tip that i'd like to give uh to all you guys wonderful guys who've joined us today would be budget your project e- even if it's a budgeted project or a luxury design both can be planned around the use of natural material right so let us engage skilled craftsmanship and help them infuse technology to the optimum utilization of this natural material so let us not forget that yes we are all moving extremely fast with technology but all said and done we need skilled labors we need we still know that the natural material should be handled by the right craftsmen to be able to justify its methods of laying it right mm-hmm. so so all of us should engage with technology but not to forget that yes let's keep engaging uh, skilled craftsmen with the use of natural material that's a really beautiful note to uh, end on thank you so much ruchi it was really insightful thank you so much and, uh, yeah uh, i just on behalf of the a class team uh, we'd like to thank you for being a part of this journey i don't i'm not sure if you're aware but a class celebrated 50 years of being in the industry and uh, as a uh, as a gesture of gratitude for you to participate in this journey they'll be planting a tree on your behalf and sending you a certificate so so lovely uh, thank you thank so you much thank you so very much and we look forward to your work seeing more of your work thank you very much thank you thank you so thank much you. for this thank it was a absolutely a knowledge sharing experience thank you yes likewise thank you for sharing such wonderful thoughts with the audience thank you thank you guys thank you yes. bye bye